It was afternoon. The sun was all set to set for the day. Jankov opened his eyes, looked at his wife's sleeping figure, sleeping peacefully. Her tiredness was evident in her face. Jankov took his phone to check when schedule. Wifey? He gently called her while his fingers were caressing her hair. She opened her eyes and looked outside. Looking at the orange-colored sun in the sky, she closed her eyes. It's early in the morning, go sleep. She closed her eyes again. Aniyo? Jankuk chuckled. It's afternoon, almost evening. You have night shifts? Come on, get up. At least look at me. When? It's wifey. She corrected before opening her eyes. Call me wifey in home. Five more minutes, please. When requested in a sleepy voice, when will I be able to live like the ultimate boss lady? Of course, she cringed. Cook, do you want me to apply for your leave from my account? I'm sure it will be granted, but you have to compromise with the consequences. When? Let me check my schedule first. She took her phone and unlocked her mobile screen. Cook, you have informed everyone that I'm your husband, so when? My lips are precious. I'm not gonna waste it. Hey, please make some coffee. You make the best one, so if I use any other way to re-energize you? Cook's my friend wrapped his arms around her waistline and giggled as she loved the cozy feeling with Cook. The schedule is not that much hectic tonight, yet I want to stay like this. Compensate me with something. She pouted her lips. Cook, what do you want? When? Oh, my baby CEO. Cook, I will count five. If you want something, say within the counting time, otherwise you would lose the chance. Cook started counting. Hanan, Guri, Seth, Van. Stop, 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 stop. She quickly got up and sat on the bed. What's about camping outside with all of our brothers and families? Cook, ah. Van, please don't say no, please. Cook, no, indeed, it's a good idea and Tehang Young's birthday is also on 30th, but... On birth? But Junior is too little to campaign outside in winter. I'm just a little worried about him and it will be totally no fun if I can't play with that cutie. I wish I would have little kids in our house. I would play with them, feed them and also I would get the chance to buy the toys I always wanted to play with. Without a second thought, Jungkook spoke his heart out. When looked at him, she could feel like she just explored a new side of Jungkook. A bright smile of satisfaction was curved on her face as she realized that the person laying on the bed would be a perfect father of her children. Let's call Yung Yopa and ask him what's about a surprise birthday party for Tehang Uppa, one suggested. Cook, where? When? You call and ask Yung Yopa like for the cutie guy, I would agree to set up the camp on his backyard. Come on man, it's Christmas season and I'm working without leave. Please hubby. Cook, you don't need to be dramatic at all. I will call him after making coffee for us. When? It's just a call. Please call him. If he is busy, doesn't receive the call, then I will not force you. But please, 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 please. Please, Cookie. Cook, where is my wake up? I will not touch my phone if you don't give me my right. When you were challenging me? How dare you? Cook gently snuggled his arms to wrap her waist before he took her into his embrace. It's definitely not challenge. It's routine that we should follow. When? You first dial Yungeopa's number, I promise I will follow the routine and if he picks up the call, I will surprise you. Cook, I believed you. He took his phone from the nightstand and dialed Yungi's number, securing himself in a 
sitting position on the corner of his bed. He looked at Van who just positioned herself between his legs in a sitting position on the carpet. He could guess something going to be happened and Inge received the call. Yebuseyo, cook, young. Yungi, ne, janku ka? Cook, are you busy, young? Actually, when moved according to her plan, she grabbed the elastic band of Cook's sweatband and pulled down that along with his. Cook just surprised at her sudden move. Yungi, busy but not so busy. I still have the time. Tell me, what happened? The cook didn't put the call in a speaker, but Yungi's words were still partially audible to Van. She smirked devilishly and licked the that made him tremble at his position. Yungi, Yebuseyo, Jankook, can you hear me? Cook exulted. Young, uh, actually, my wife and Yungi, I know you got married. Congratulations, Cook. Cook actually when wanted to, he couldn't form the sentence as his was coated by the warm saliva of Van. Yungi, please go ahead. Jungkook. Yungi actually suspected that the couple might be in a situation, so he started teasing the Mahmi. Cook, when wanted to meet you all. in the occasion of the hong hyung's birthday and she that's all he could form in his mind and he felt a gentle yet the most divine yungi and she cook huffed yungi on the other side of the phone smiled as he understood that his assumptions about cook was correct yungi what the kid wants and i think i can arrange as you called me what did she ask for cook camping jankook breathed yungi in december's night cook in your backyard so that junior could also enjoy with us when stopped to hear yungi's reply but jankook wanted her to continue yungi Good idea. I will inform you. I need to ask Goyangi if she is free. It's possible. Cook. A cat asking permission from another cat? Yungi. Nay, I know my wife. She would not lose the chance of getting drunk. So, I will ask Goyangi. Junior actually loves to stay with her and vice versa. So, and I have messaged her. Cook. It means it's a yes. Yungi. the day before new year i guess she will be free you can say your proposal has the probability i will call te to babysit junior and tell your wife that oppa liked her plan eagerly waiting to meet her oh oh jankuka goyang just replied me it's a thumbs up when got up from her position and pressed quick back on his and went to the washroom to get ready for hospital live in jungkook just like that cook okay young good night you'll be left out as he could sense dissatisfaction on his voice i'm disconnecting the call but you continue you are newly married couple so troll the call was disconnected jungkook was embarrassed yet frustrated he indeed needed to use the washroom but clever one had already offered that he glanced at the wall clock they were still on time he wanted to argue badly but for leaving him like that but they didn't have the time for that he got up and walked into the other washroom when could hear him as he was in the process of being relaxed a devilish grin was visible on her face after getting ready she took her phone from the nightstand she decided to wait for jungkook as it would be no fun if she leave for hospital She wanted to trigger the double bunny just before the last night shift of the year. When started studying the patient's history, sitting on the couch at the living room, she couldn't stop herself from laughing as she felt Jungkook's sharp gaze, but she tried to calm and quiet. Jungkook, John Wen, you'd regret for doing this to me. 
when we are getting late cook let's go she acted like nothing happened cook frowned and gulped down an amount of saliva to suppress his anger when looked at him and realized she had successfully activated the double money mode she smirked jacob didn't utter a single word just took the keys and holding her wrist he walked out from their nest casually he knew when was trying to trigger him desperately a small reaction could make him late for his meetings he inhaled deeply before instructing her to occupy herself at the passenger seat when followed his instruction without a single word he ignited the engine of the car when planned to avoid eye contact with him through the whole ride nobody uttered a single word yet both of them were cherishing the comfortable silence between them and jankuk decided to break the silence as he was quite calmed down after a few minutes yungi hyung said that he is eagerly waiting to meet you well i will be here well don't worry cook anyo i'm not worried at all but i promise wifey i will wait with patience to reply you for your today's actions just be aware and remember one thing don't look at if you do that i had to introduce you to the wedding gift my hyangs prepared for us the red room when did they give us untrained and wild animals and you keep them in that room cook bursted into laughter at avan's innocent mind's idealizations about the red room do you think they would do so and i will take you there no when what's in the red room cook just dare to look at and the when was curious about the red room but she never thought to look at any random man's as she knew she is married to the person who is better than the best and of course she didn't dare to the car stopped in front of the hospital gate cook it will take time to park the car you might be late when pouted and got out of the car not because cook dropped just in front of the hospital gate but he didn't ask her if she was okay or not he didn't speak a single word about the morning she felt quite disappointed while heading towards the hospital her upset facial expressions were visible and of course the hospital staffs were eyeing on her as they got to know that she was the lady boss a devilish smirk was plastered on the face of one co-worker as he carefully noticed them actually coincidentally while enjoying his coffee he was eager to know how she actually got married to the ceo yet having a crush on her made him alert as he actually wanted her to be happy in her personal life when changed into her duty outfit and was heading towards her small desk setup coincidentally the doctor was also about to set himself on his desk and the met the colleague so when when greeted politely good evening doctor the colleague the lady was seems upset is there something we can do to cheer you up when shut your mouth off and don't call me lady boss it will be more than enough her co-worker actually could assume that one's mood wasn't good and the ceo might be the reason behind that the colleague come on when show us your professional skills put on a bright smile before going to the rounds with me when oh I definitely need a cheap retractor then. The colleague, ha ha, very funny, but when are you happy? Being married to the CEO? When looked at him, she asked herself if she was not happy with Jungkook. She thought for the next few moments and she realized no one can define the word happy. But she was more than overwhelmed having him as her life partner. She was upset at that moment but she wasn't unhappy. When replied, "Um," she stammered. The colleague, "You have me. You can ask for anything, anytime." He casually patted on her shoulder with a warm smile on his face. 
The whole thing was happening when the CEO appeared, walking out from the lift, and the couple sighs met as the colleague gently hugged her back facing the CEO. After a few gentle taps on her shoulder, he just casually walked and sat on his desk. One fist at his spot. Yeah, she was feeling guilty as her co-worker hugged her. Though his body language, his hug, his pat was friendly, still one was feeling guilty as she knew that it was next to impossible for Cook to guess their topic of discussion. On the other side, Cook actually didn't think anything about that hug. Though witnessing something made him feeling awkward but it was workplace. He carefully looked at Van. For some unknown reason, she was looking dull. He guessed the guy must be trying to cheer her up. He casually crossed Van who was freezed at his spot. She kept looking at the back frame of her husband who already busied himself in communicating with the staffs of the hospital. Did you guys fight? Van's mind heated the reality as she heard those words from her co-worker. Newly married couples often do that. Living under one roof is both different and difficult even for the couples who are already in love. Dr. Van, fighting. He tried his best to cheer Van for the reason which actually was not the reason for her mood off. Yet his words were comforting to her. He lightly smiled before occupying herself to study the cases. It was almost midnight. Completing the scheduled surgeries, one was thinking to have a quick nap. Leaning her head on her working desk, she just had closed her eyes when her phone vibrated. Incoming call from the CEO. The phone was on the table, vibrating. She could see the caller ID without moving her neck, and she didn't dare to move a centimeter after seeing that. After a few times calling her, Jungkook finally looked at the monitor. His van was sleeping. He could see her phone's light as he dialed her number. Maybe she is tired? Might be her sleep wasn't completed? Should I take her to the room? Again? He murmured while checking the whole room. Except when all the doctors were male. This stupid girl, how could you be so casual, Van? Angrily, he stepped out of his CEO's cabin and stepped into the room where Van Vogue was half asleep. He looked at her mobile screen, seven missed calls from the CEO. The CEO? He uttered and Van flinched. You are awake? He asked while tapping on her shoulder. Van opened her red puffy eyes. Yeah. Jungkook literally wanted to argue with her, but he stopped. Stuffing her phone into his trousers pocket, he took her into his arms and was about to step out of the room when one was about to protest, but his soft lips stopped her from uttering a single word. He knew that the closed circuit camera was doing its job, but he just didn't want to drag their personal life in front of the staffs for his wife's casualties, and letting her speak while carrying her through the silent corridor would just work as oxygen in that case. When she heard as the cold wind heated her skin, she grabbed his shirt tightly and finally they were in their nest. You still have to work? She asked in sleepy voice as she sensed the bright lights. Yeah, a few. Don't worry. I will use the tape lamp. He answered while trying to lay her on the bed but she refused. What? He asked. The bed is cold. You are colder yet. I want your embrace. I don't have any issues with the lights. I know you work comfortably under the room lights and you know that I'm afraid of dark. It's a win-win situation. Her sleepy voice heated his eardrum. He wanted to ask many things but Van's voice sounded too sleepy. He hummed softly and started walking while Van occupied his lap. Covering their bodies with a warm blanket, he placed a pack on her forehead. Good night, wifey.